Hello and welcome to Taxi Tutorials. Today we are discussing JavaScript decorators. You may have used it, you may have, you may have seen it in a, a framework and they are being heavily used nowadays, but a lot of people don't know what they are. So today we are going to understand what that, uh, we're gonna look at class decorator, property descriptor decorators, and in the end, we are going to look at a couple of practical examples on how to and where to use decorators. So here's a definition I found on decorating in a dictionary called look more attractive by adding extra items. What it means is that when you have a Christmas tree and you put more ornaments, it looks more attractive. Uh, so the ornaments are actually decorators. And when a girl put on a lipstick, lipstick is also considered as a decorator or earring. A decorator. I think it's always important to understand the meaning of something before you start. So that is the real meaning of decorator. It's to you add something on top of uh, existing items to make it look good. Now how does this work in JavaScript? Well to understand it let's decorate our class with an ornament. All right, so I'm, in, I'm here inside JS Fiddle, and I'm gonna create a class called girl. So say class, girl, and I'm going to let her decorate herself with a lipstick. In JavaScript, we don't have real lipstick, so we're gonna use functions. Let lipstick equal to a function, and it has target, target, means whichever object it's going to decorate. In this case, it's gonna be girl. And inside, all it does is, it would say target.lips equal to. So now let's decorate uh, this girl with a lipstick. So all, of, all we have to do is add sign and then name of the decorator. So lipstick, and that's it. Remember how you put uh, ornament on a, on a Christmas tree? The similarly, we put this decorator on the top of a class, just right on the top of the class. And that's how the decorator works. And if I wanna look at it, all I have to do is uh, console log girl dot lips. Write a little bit more interesting here with a template string. If you don't know what they are, I have a tutorial. So I can say, her lips are, and if I run this, hmm, I have an error. It says invalid or unexpected token. That is because currently, if you want to use a decorator, you have to use Babel, a transpiler. In a browser, probably won't work, but you can still use it in a production system if you're using Babel. Just like uh, you know, when you use React or Angular, you are probably you're using ES2015 or 16 and you're transpiling to a lower version of JavaScript. So here we have to do the same thing. And in JS Fiddle, you can click here and pick Babel and JSX and that should automatically work. So now if I run this, it would say her lips are pink. Uh, it added a property call lips and its value equal to pink. Now let's say if you don't wanna get stuck with a pink color and you wanna have a choice of color uh, like this, let's say if I wanna black, uh, let's say you wanna use a black lipstick. So here instead of target, the way I would do is I would, I would pass color here and instead of this line, I would return a function uh, with target uh, target dot lips equal to color uh, this is called a curry function uh, if you don't know what curry function is basically when I execute this function it returns this function and so it's partially executed with the color as a closure inside if you don't know what it is uh, I have a tutorial on it I'll provide a link here all right so now if I run this it should give me lip, her lips are black. It would say her lips are black, so it works. And similarly, I can have another decorator. Let's say if I have a decorator called 
uh, earrings equal to uh, target has earring equal to true. Put a decorator on the top of another decorator. So it would say earrings. That's all I have to do. Earring. Run it. I get her lips are black and she has earring equal to true. And in the end of the tutorial, we're going to look at an example of how they're useful. Um, but let's move on to property descriptor decorator. All right, let's uh, get back to our familiar class car. So here I have a class car and have a constructor which basically sets initial property colors. And then you have a method called get color, which simply returns uh, the object's color. So then I create a new object called red car from this car object and i'm just going to say red car dot get color which basically should give me red so if i run this i am getting red the funny thing about javascript in javascript methods can be overwritten so this method i can actually overwrite outside so i can just simply here say red car dot get color equal to function and I can say return blah blah, which means it doesn't really know what it's doing. So now I have written over in this method. And now if I run this, it would give me blah blah here, which is not desirable because I don't want anybody to change this method, overwrite this method after I define my class, just like Java does. So for that, we can use decorator. But before I do that, let's Let's try to do without decorator and then we use decorator so we understand how decorator makes things easier. So if I want to do it without decorator, what I have to do is, since there is no good way to do it inside the car, I have to move this method outside. And there is an object method define property it takes three arguments the first argument is going to be which which object i'm defining this property to in this case is going to be class car and so i'm just going to say car but when i add a instance method to an uh, to a class actually goes in its prototype so i'm just going to say prototype again if you have looked at the whole this whole uh, tutorial series you will probably know what prototype is all the all about prototype in detail if you haven't done so please do it so you would understand it in more detail i'll provide a link here but anyway the second argument is going to be the name of the method so i would say get color and the third thing is going to be configuration because uh, we want to make it writable equal to false so the configuration is going to be three things first thing is going to be value value is the definition of the property it's going to be that method um, get color so and return this dot color. the second thing is going to be writable is false which means i cannot overwrite this method and it has two other properties that we have to write one is configurable true and the second method is enumerable and that is also true so if i run it it now gives me red which means it doesn't give me blah blah which means it's not overriding it's supposed to actually give me error but somehow i don't know it's problem with this babble or what but it's not giving me error but it's doing the right thing it's not actually overriding this method and blah blah so if i make it true and run it it would give me blah blah that means um, it's overriding it so this really works however right the syntax is really boring what I can do is I can remove this uh, this part which is called property descriptor outside as a separate object so I can say this object and I can just pass here descriptor and what I can do I can write a function which basically allows us to change this writable to false uh, so it's much flexible so what i can do is i can write a function called read only it would pass all three basically target 
uh, key, key is this, and descriptor. So all it's going to do is first is uh, set the writable property equal to false in descriptor. So it would say descriptor dot writable equal to false. And then it would return the descriptor. All right, so I have this descriptor and I have written a read-only method which converts this descriptor and makes writable equal to false. And I can pass that into here so that I can make it more flexible. And so the last thing I have to do before I do is I have to say read only descriptor equal to, I'll just pass everything here and it would get me a new descriptor with writable equal to false and I would pass it here into define property and that would define property with um, writable equal to false. It is a lot of code and it's confusing but it will be soon very easy. So now if I run it, ah, I made a mistake here, I should say equal to function. So if I run it now, it gives me that, which means it doesn't let me override it. Let's use a decorator and not use all of the garbage. So all I, all I need here is this read-only function, which we already know how it works. And I'm just gonna put it before car. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment out everything else up to here. All I have to do now is put the method back inside um, this dot color right, and I would decorate this with read only, and it would work like a charm, and it does exactly what we were doing here in this one tiny line. I should actually say true. That's why it's giving me blah, blah. It's supposed to be make it false. And now if I run this, it will give me red, which means it doesn't let me overwrite. Now look at the power of this. Now I can have this function, this decorator. I can use it a lot of different places. I, I can have a library of such decorators. I can import it and use it wherever um, I need to have read-only by just placing this decorator right on the top of a function and makes it non-writable. Another application for the property descriptor decorator is, let's say if I if I want to de deprecate particular method. So let's say if this method is being deprecated. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to let users know that don't use this method, even though it's in the library. Um, I can write a little decorator that whenever somebody uses it, it prints out this message saying that this method has been de um, deprecated. And the good thing is I can change the message anytime if I want by simply changing the message here. And wherever I use this decorator, the message will be changed. Now let's look at the class decorator, the one we initially used, uh, the, the lipstick example, where it adds properties to the class by placing a decorator in the top, right? So uh, I have here Angular project. It uses class for the modules, components, and many other things, right? So here I have a, a module. It exports this class called app module. And if you look at, there is a, a decorator called ng module. Module in the Angular has specific meanings, which means it needs if you have services, you need to pass it. It needs a, if it's a main component, main uh, module, then it needs a bootstrap. You need to bootstrap, uh, and it also needs some declaration with other component inside. So all of this are done by simply placing the decorator and passing all the properties, and that makes this class a module. So we are decorating this class from outside, so it becomes a module. Now similarly. If I look at another example where this class is actually a component, then I have this component called hello world component. And if I put a component, a decorator, now component decorator would, would have its own properties. We don't see it here. That makes it a component. But component needs three things. You need a selector, a tag, selector tag. 
it needs a template URL and it needs um, a style URL, which means it needs some HTML, some CSS, and some tag name that which, which you can insert inside another document, which makes it a component. So decorators are really cool. And I try to explain you decorator in much simpler language as possible. And I hope you learned it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and provide a constructive comment. Thank you.